Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. My name's Dr. Paul. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different and I'm testing something out. So if you watch this and you find it to be helpful, beneficial, or just enjoyable, please leave me a comment in the comment section below saying, yes, I wanna see more just like this. What I'm gonna do today is I've created a handful of questions about a specific topic. Today we're gonna focus on the brachial plexus. So this would obviously be ideal if you're prepping for step one. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring you through true, false, or multiple choice questions, and we are going to give you some time to go through the question, try and figure it out, and then I'm gonna to explain to you the correct answer and give you a little bit of a background about the pathology, the anatomy, et cetera, about these specific areas. So let's just dive in and let's get started. So again, if you find this to be enjoyable, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to know if these are worth uh, putting effort into or if you'd rather I just do something else altogether. All right, so let's dive in. All right, so let's get started. This is how this is going to work. So I'm gonna give you a question. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds. I'll put a uh, timer up on the screen. Go through that question, pick your correct answer, and then when time is up, what we'll do is we'll go on to the answer. I'll give you a little bit of an explanation about the specific topic that we are covering, and then we'll go through all the questions this way. All right, so let's get started with question number one. Again, you have 20 seconds. So the correct answer here is B, location two. Wing scapula, as we know, is caused by a lesion to the long thoracic nerve. Now, common reasons why wing scapula might, might occur could be, uh, of course, trauma, uh, most likely a stab wound, but this is also something that you might see following an axillary node dissection after mastectomy. Very important to make sure you keep those two in mind. Now, my question to you is this. In winged scapula, which muscle is now defective and leading to this winging of the scapula? What's the answer? You should know that is, it is the serratus anterior, which when injured means we cannot properly anchor the scapula to the thoracic cage. That leads to an inability to abduct the arm above horizontal positions. All right, on to the next question. The correct answer here is A, location number one. Now, herb palsy is also known as waiter's tip, and this is characterized by a couple of things. First, a deltoid and supraspinatus injury causes an abduction defect that results in the arm hanging by the side. The second issue here is a functional defect in lateral rotation. This results in an arm that is medially rotated. Now, this is due to infraspinatus and supraspinatus muscle defects. And finally, a defect in flexion and supination results in an arm that is extended and pronated. This is due to a biceps brachii defect. Now, what are the most common causes of this problem in infants? Do you know? Just name the most common cause. The most common reason why an infant would have this type of injury is injury during delivery, specifically one that causes lateral traction of the neck. Now, in an adult, the most common cause would be trauma that causes traction or tearing of that upper trunk, affecting the C5 and the C6 roots. All right, on to the next question. The correct answer here is E, location five. Now, deltoid paralysis will be the result of a lesion to which nerve? The axillary nerve. Now, do you remember some of the likely causes of an axillary nerve injury? Okay, a fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus and or an anterior shoulder dislocation are probably the most high yield ones that you'll need to know because um, they'll throw that at you in a vignette but also consider a stab wound to the posterior shoulder, as well as the use of crutches, causing what is known as crush palsy. All right, on to the next question.
The correct answer here is H, location eight. So what is the hand of benediction? Well, this is a physical finding caused by a decrease in thumb function as a result, result of injury to which nerve? Hopefully you know the median nerve. Now the issue here is an inability to flex the MCP and IP joints of the middle and the index fingers while there's the ability to flex the MCP and IP joints of the ring and little fingers. Now, be careful. You don't want to confuse this with ulnar claw. Ulnar claw is due to a lesion of the ulnar nerve at the wrist area. Now, as opposed to the hand of benediction uh, seen with a median nerve injury, the ulnar claw affects the ring and the little finger and results in unopposed extension at the MCP joints with unopposed flexion at the IP joints. Remember, in the hand of benediction, the lateral two lumbricals and lateral half of the FDP are paralyzed. In ulnar claw, the medial two lumbricals are paralyzed. All right, on to the next question. The correct answer here is F, location six. Now, wrist drop is, of course, caused by injury to the radial nerve. Now, this can be precipitated by a mid-shaft fracture of the humerus, as well as by compression of the axillary region. Now, I want you to keep in mind, when you're looking at a radial nerve injury, if the injury occurs above the elbow, you will see a loss of sensation over the posterior aspect of the arm and forearm, as well as in the dorsum of the hand. Now, this is all, of course, in addition to wrist drop. If the injury is below the elbow, this will cause distal paresthesias without wrist drop. Very important distinction. All right, on to the next question. The correct answer here is C, three. So clumpy palsy results in the physical finding of what? It causes claw hand, and this injury results from traction or tearing of the lower trunk at the C8 and T1 roots. So I want you to watch for an infant who experienced an upward force applied to the arm during delivery as the most likely cause. Now in adults, forceful upward traction is also a common cause for this injury. Now the common example would be if you were falling from a tree and you grabbed a branch on the way down, that sort of upward traction as your body was being pulled down could cause this type of injury. And this injury affects the intrinsic muscles of the hand and as I mentioned, results in that characteristic claw hand. All right, on to the next question. Correct answer to this question is I, nine. So this is a bit of a trick because we just discussed clumpy palsy, which can also cause claw hand. Keep in mind though, that an injury to the distal ulnar branch can also cause claw hand as a result of injury to the intrinsic muscles of the hand. We can see clawing of the hand with distal injuries to the median and ulnar nerves, with the difference being that in the ulnar claw, extension of the middle and index finger are seen with flexion of the little and ring fingers. Whereas in the median claw, you'll see flexion of the index and middle finger with extension of the ring and little finger. You'll see this unique claw in the context of a patient who's trying to extend the fingers as well as at rest. All right, we have one more question, let's dive in. So the correct answer here is F, location six. So Saturday night palsy is of course caused by compression of the radial nerve. Now the term hints at passing out on a Saturday night with your arms sort of dangling over the back of a chair. But the reality is that prolonged direct pressure onto the upper medial arm or the axillary region can lead to compressive neuropathy. Another likely scenario is someone using crutches to get around. 
So they're, of course, going to compress this region as well. So you want to always want to make sure that you are thinking of different possibilities for these compression neuropathies, not just those high yield buzzword type of situations. That's it for today's Q&A of the brachial plexus. If you found this to be helpful or you enjoyed it, this is exactly how our upcoming step one and step two CK question-based prep programs are going to be delivered. So keep an eye out for those. All right. What'd you guys think? Was that helpful or was that not helpful? If you like that, a couple of things, please hit that like button, subscribe, set up notifications. And if I should make more like this, comment yes below. And then if you have a specific topic you want me to create these questions about, let me know in the comment section. I would love some uh, information about what you guys are looking for so that I can put my energy into things that will help you the most. All right. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I'm looking forward to your comments to see if this was a worthwhile uh, use of my energy and time. But thank you for spending some time with me today. I always appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Hey there, thanks for watching. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. We've got a couple more great videos. We got one up here, we got one up there. See you guys on the next video.